ferrosamide side effects. My name is Dave. I'm a pharmacist. Welcome to the channel. After we talk about the side effects, I will be warning you about a drug interaction between ferrosamide and a group of commonly used over-the-counter medications. So definitely stay tuned for that. Uh, so ferrosamide, the brand name is Lasix, stemming from the fact that it lasts about six hours. And you should know that. It's a diuretic. It increases urine output. Uh, the whole idea there is to lower blood pressure ultimately or get rid of excess fluid that collects in the legs or the feet. Um, you should take it in the morning because you're going to have to go to the bathroom a lot. That's the number one side effect, polyuria, which is excessive urination. If the doctor prescribes two doses per day, the second dose should be taken about six to eight hours later in the early afternoon. Like I said, it lasts for about six hours. So you do not want to take it at bedtime and have to wake up throughout the night to go to the bathroom. Because your body is going to be eliminating all this excess fluid, you can also get dehydrated, dizzy, and develop low blood pressure. Also, when your body produces all this extra urine, you're not just losing the water, you're also losing electrolytes, mainly potassium, magnesium, and calcium. For this reason, Doctors often prescribe potassium supplements to go along with the ferrosamide. And you should know that over-the-counter potassium supplements are useless. The best way to increase your potassium intake short of a prescription potassium supplement is nutrient-rich foods, mainly fruits and vegetables. And you should aim to consume 8 to 10 servings a day of fruits and vegetables. And that'll also help you get the magnesium and the calcium that you're losing and less than 2% of U.S. adults consume the recommended amount of potassium. And if you don't believe me, check out the source that I cited at the bottom of the slide there. Here are some of the most potassium-rich foods out there. And the common theme here is fruit and vegetable. Like I said, if you eat 8 to 10 servings a day of these things, you're very unlikely to be um, potassium deficient. Okay, another side effect, orthostatic hypotension. That's basically a sudden drop in blood pressure when you stand up. You might feel dizzy or lightheaded temporarily. And there's the possibility of fainting, which is dangerous because if you fall, you could crack a bone. Uh, we definitely recommend if you're taking furosemide to avoid alcohol. Alcohol is a vasodilator, expands the blood vessels, and that drops blood pressure even further, increasing the likelihood of orthostatic hypotension. Ferrosamide can also slightly increase blood glucose levels. In a typical person, it doesn't really matter, but if you have diabetes, you may actually have to adjust your medications uh, so you can account for that. Another potential side effect of ferrosamide is ototoxicity, which is basically damage to the inner ear. That can result in hearing loss, ringing in the ears, or vertigo. And if you're experiencing this, you need to notify your physician as soon as possible before it gets worse. Now, you remember at the beginning of the video, I said I would tell you about a drug interaction between ferrosamide and an over-the-counter medication. And what I'm talking about there is the NSAIDs, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Examples are ibuprofen and naproxen. And when taken together with a diuretic like ferrosamide, that can cause injury to the kidney. And it also opposes the effect of the ferrosamide. So you should avoid NSAIDs, avoid ibuprofen and naproxen. And if you need an over-the-counter pain medication, opt for Tylenol instead. And the only thing worse than taking furosemide with an NSAID would be also taking that with an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. And those are drugs, the generic name ends in Pril or Sartan. Those are also blood pressure medications. And we call that drug interaction the triple whammy. That's very dangerous for the kidneys. Um, another side effect that I did not talk about with furosemide is photosensitivity. That's basically sensitivity to the sunlight and what that means basically is just that you're going to burn really easily you're going to get a sunburn so if you go outside in the sun and you're taking furosemide make sure to apply sunscreen liberally and we recommend spf 50 or higher 
And if you're taking the furosemide for high blood pressure, monitor your high blood pressure. Get a blood pressure monitor. You can get a really good one for about 35 bucks. And if you want one that's pharmacist recommended, check out the description below and you'll find a link down there. And if you're taking furosemide for edema, which is swelling, then you need a scale to monitor your body weight. You may have already been instructed by your doctor that if your body weight increases by a certain amount, then you should take a dose. Uh, so in any case, you should be monitoring your weight daily. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, I do have a book coming out soon. It's for people who have had an ablation for atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter or supraventricular tachycardia who want to do everything they can to minimize their risk of developing another arrhythmia going forward. So if you're interested in that or you know somebody who is, tell them to check out my channel, subscribe, and I'll make an announcement when the book is out. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.